Hello, this is Music Tech Help Guy. Welcome to episode 20 of my Logic Pro 10 video tutorial series. In this episode, we'll take a look at the speed and tempophone algorithms uh, in flex time. And this will be my final uh, part, part three, of my series on flex time. However, we will come back to flex time when we talk about uh, tempo changes in the next video, and then also we'll uh, come back to flex pitch in episode 22. So essentially what the uh, speed and tempophone modes do is they allow us to create special effects uh, with our audio by stretching or compressing. So our example here is just a basic drum pattern with a bass and some rhythmic effects. So our goal here is to use the speed and tempophone modes to morph and change these two loops to maybe do something a little bit more interesting with them. So first let's uh, enable flex time by clicking right here. And then what we're going to do is enable flex time in each of the tracks. Uh, right now I have slicing selected for both of them, but uh, we're going to change that. So let's just click here to uh, turn on flex time. Let's zoom in a bit here. And actually what I'm going to do to start is uh, I'm just going to uh, solo out just the beat here and I'm going to, let's go ahead and minimize the, uh, the track for the bass. So with the drum part soloed, let's take a listen to what it sounds like. All right, so that's a pretty stock uh, four on the floor pattern. Um, what we can do with slicing, and this is something we covered in the last video, but I'll, I'll, I'll cover it again, is uh, you can click toward the top of each of the transient markers to create a flex marker, or you can click toward the middle of the transient marker to create three flex markers. And I'm gonna do that um, in two places. I'm gonna do it uh, here as well. And so what I'm going to do is using slicing, I'm going to move uh, the middle of the three markers to the left to offset and change the rhythm. I also have my snap mode set to division so that each of the flex markers snaps to the divisions on the grid. So now that we've changed the rhythm here, let's, uh, let's listen to what this sounds like. Now you might be asking, music tech help guy, why are you just rehashing the slicing mode? I came here for a speed and tempo phone tutorial. Um, the reason why I'm rehashing slicing is because I want you to realize that um, the whole idea of time compression expansion comes from the tape recording world, where if you in increase or decrease the playback speed of tape, you actually affect the pitch of the recording. So even with uh, the rhythmic algorithm, Even though there's a few more uh, digital artifacts produced from Rhythmic as opposed to slicing, Rhythmic still doesn't affect the pitch of the recording when we adjust the playback speed. And that actually goes for monophonic, slicing, Rhythmic, and polyphonic. So finally, let's talk about the tempophone and speed modes. Let's actually start with the speed mode. Uh, speed actually works a lot like what's called a VeraSpeed effect. And what it does is it increases or decreases the playback speed of stretched or compressed material. So if you compress material, you are increasing the playback speed. And if you stretch material, you're decreasing the playback speed. So when I play back this example, the waveforms in white that have been expanded, uh, that have been stretched so that the playback speed is going slower and pitch will actually drop. The areas where the waveform have been compressed, the pitch will actually go up. So you can hear that the pitch of the snare drum has gone up, and you can also hear that the pitch of the kick drum has gone down. So let's try reversing that. Let's stretch out the snare drum and then compress the kick drum. So when I play this back, you'll hear that the snare drum's pitch has dropped, and we'll also hear that the kick drum's pitch has uh, been raised. So let's take a listen to what this sounds like. So you can see that the pitch mode is really useful if you're trying to intentionally create uh, playback speed effects or if you're trying to create uh, special effects where uh, you can alter the pitch of part of your recording.
All right, next let's talk about the Tempophone algorithm. The Tempophone algorithm emulates the effect of a historical tape-based time-stretching device uh, called a Tempophone. And what happens is this results in a very mechanical sound that has a lot of digital artifacts in it. Um, so this can be used uh, to create special effects, um, and it kind of affects pitch uh, a little bit, but not not directly like the way that the speed algorithm does. And yes, I'm reading the definition for Tempophone straight out of the Logic 10 manual. That's the, pretty much the best definition for it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to choose Tempophone, but I'm going to keep my flex markers in the same place they were before, and we'll hear those digital artifacts in this example. So next, let's try uh, compressing our kick drums like we did before and see how Tempophone affects this. So you can hear there that the snare drum has been expanded uh, and instead of producing a pitch effect like speed did, Tempophone produces a glitchy or gargled effect that's a result of granular synthesis, which essentially means that we chop the sample up into a bunch of smaller grains and then reconstruct those grains based on our time compression or expansion. All right, so now that I'm done with the drum pattern here, I'm going to turn flex time off and I'm going to mute that track. And uh, I'm going to focus on the bass and sound effects track here. And uh, first, I want to um, kind of remove some of the analysis markers here, the transient markers that we looked at in the previous two episodes. So I'm going to double click on the region, uh, the top of the region here, open it up in the file editor. And one of the things I didn't show you in the previous episode is that when you work in transient editing mode, you can actually increase or decrease the sensitivity of the analysis. So what I'm going to do is click on the minus sign here a couple times to decrease the analysis of the transient markers. And you can see that now I have one transient marker per note in the track rather than having multiple transient markers per note in the track. So this is going to make the analysis just a little bit more accurate. So let's just take a listen to what this sounds like by itself. All right, so what we're going to do is we are going to apply some speed and tempophone effects to this track. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to I'm going to work in slicing, uh, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click at the top of the region here, and then I'm going to choose the slice at transient markers that I showed you in the previous video. So this is just going to slice this region up to a bunch of smaller pieces, and then what I'm going to do is duplicate this track by clicking right here. And what this will do is duplicate the track with all of the same settings on it. And now this allow, will allow me to pull some of the slices from the upper recording down onto the uh, lower track. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure that I have division selected in my snap mode. And I'm going to make sure that I'm in relative uh, values so that I can pull these straight down and make sure that they ma maintain their position on the grid. So I'm going to pull these three slices down and I'm going to affect them uh, starting with speed and then with Tempophone later. So what I'm going to do is change the flex algorithm of just this duplicated track to speed, and then the upper track won't be affected by my speed changes. So there's basically two ways you can affect the, uh, you can change the waveform here. One is you can click within the region and stretch and or compress within the region and basically it just creates a flex marker for you like I showed in the previous video. The other way to do this is if you hover over the right side of the region, you can actually just affect the boundary of the region. It'll actually stretch or compress the entire region. So that's just, that's just another way to do it. So I'm just going to affect just this one region and stretch it out. We'll stretch this one out as well. And this third one will stretch out as well. And so let's listen to what this sounds like. So that just affected the playback speed and the pitch. Let's see if the Tempophone algorithm produces a little bit more interesting effect. So 
So that's definitely a more interesting effect. Let's go ahead and stretch our first two regions here out a bit more, and let's see if we can create a more dramatic effect. Yeah, so that's definitely a much more dramatic special effect that we can create with Tempophone. And like I said before, it's it's unlike speed, it's less of like a pitch effect and more of like a gargly, glitchy effect. So it's really more of like a timbre tone change than a pitch effect. So let's unmute our original beat here. And let's just hear what all three of these tracks sound like simultaneously now that we've created this kind of more interesting uh, Tempophone effect. Yeah, that's a lot better than what we had uh, originally. Those, uh, those Tempophone effects really help to just bring out some new tones and timbres that we uh, didn't have in the original loops. So one thing I want everyone to be aware of is that these last three videos I've done, episodes 18, 19, and 20, are in no way a 100% tutorial of flex time. I just want you to be aware that there are additional track uh, parameters in the inspector for each of the different flex algorithms, and you can go and you can further customize each of them. And if you're really interested in that sort of thing, you can actually go on Apple's website and reference the Logic 10 user manual, and the manual will tell you exactly what each of those additional parameters does. I'm basically just showing you uh, an overview of the, of the most important points of what you need to do to get flex time working for you. In the next episode, we'll take a look at tempo changes and how flex time applies to that. And then finally, in episode 22, we'll take a look at flex pitch, uh, a new feature that was added to Logic 10. So I hope you enjoyed the video, and thanks for watching.